Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. If you're new here, my name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on ways to make and create more economically and ecologically. And today I have a metal bench that we've had sitting in our backyard for several years. It's gotten pretty rusty and I'm gonna see if I can refinish it make it a little more fun looking. And I'm also gonna be experimenting with some different paint products and a new sealer that I haven't used before to see how it will hold up uh, in the outdoors and also on metal. So here's the bench I'm going to be refinishing. You can see that it started out black, which a lot of metal and wrought iron furniture does, which it sort of begs the question why, since it's always too hot to sit in when you have it in the sun. But be that as it may, you can see that the bench has gotten pretty rusty here and the, even the black portions of it have gotten really dull and washed out looking. The bench wasn't super dirty, but I did take a cloth and just wipe it off with some soapy water once we had moved it into the garage. And once that was done, I was ready to kind of try to scrub off as much of the rust as possible. So before I did this project, I did a little research on how to remove rust from metal. And there are a lot of different techniques. A lot of people use steel wool. And then for small items, I saw people soaking the item in straight vinegar. Obviously, I'm not going to be soaking the bench here. But I did feel like I needed to wet my steel wool a little bit while I was working on cleaning the bench and trying to get the rust off. So I did use vinegar as my wet solution to scrub with the steel wool. You can see that the rust is not chipping off. At first I thought it was very a very thin layer of rust because there wasn't any real degrading of the metal that I could see. But even after scrubbing all of the rusted parts, I the bench is still pretty red and rusty looking. So I'm hoping that once I get the top coat of spray paint on there, that will kind of eliminate the continued rusting of the surface. For most of the bench, I was able to use the steel wool, but there were a couple of little crevices and corners where I did use a metal brush to try to scrub off the worst of the rusty parts. It's a little hard to show in this video and with the lighting that I have, but once I had scrubbed half of the bench, I could definitely see a difference in how much rust was on the bench, even though there was some rust left. I'm trying to show it in this video, but it's a little bit dark and hard to see. But there was a notable difference once I was done scrubbing with the steel wool. As I was working with the vinegar and the steel wool, I did wipe off the bench periodically to clean off the worst of the vinegar but I did still feel like there was kind of a film left on it. So I went ahead and sprayed the whole thing down with my garden hose just to rinse it off really well. And then I allowed it to dry before painting it. If you've seen any of my other recent projects, you know I've been using this Krylon Fusion all-in-one copper metallic spray paint for a lot of different projects. And I had some of it left over and it seemed like it would be a good color for the bench. I could have just painted it, repainted it black, but I thought, you know, why not try to have a color that's a little more comfortable to sit on? So I did go ahead and put a singular coat of the copper spray paint on the bench. I could have gone back with another coat, but honestly, I ran out of paint and I don't like to have a lot of spray paint sitting around, so I didn't really want to buy another can. And to be honest, I was okay with just a hint of the black showing through the copper in a few places. It was very subtle and I thought the coverage of one coat of copper spray paint looked pretty good. So as I've mentioned, I've used this Fusion all-in-one copper color on a lot of projects this summer, and I'm really interested to see how it will hold up because it says it has maximum rust protection, it's made for indoor and outdoor, and it's got the paint and the primer all-in-one. So it really should be a durable product for the outdoors and I'm hopeful that in a several months I'll be able to come back and tell you that it was working really well on all the projects that I've used it on. Now I could have stopped right there and most people probably would have but where's the fun in that? So I decided I wanted to add some colors to the scrolly part of the back of the bench and I purchased a couple of metallic colors from Deco Art. So I'm using the metallic festive green, 
teal, and gold from the Deco Art series, metallic series. And then I had some metallic folk art black paint that I ended up adding at the, over the top. This is another case where I did some research trying to find out what paint was best to use on metal. And I didn't really find anything definitive. There are certainly oil-based paints that are often recommended for metal, but your color choices are much more limited. Some of the stuff I read said that acrylic paints were just as good. So I, at the end of the day, I decided to find the colors that I wanted to use. And I am just using acrylic paints. And then I bought another product from DecoArt called DuraClear Varnish. Uh, and it is supposed to be good for indoor outdoor so I'm hoping that I can put that sealer over the top of my acrylic paints and that that will hold up to the elements so you can see where in this shot you can see where I've kind of put the antique black finish on top and the other side that I have not put the black antique finish on top again perhaps some of you would have stopped before putting all the black on top and just left the bright colors. I thought it was a little too much and I wanted to tone it down a little bit. To add the black paint, the first thing I did was use a small pointed tipped brush to add a line of black at all of the joints and in the crevices to add some shadows and depth to the design. And once that was done, I went back with a flat tipped brush and kind of a not too much paint on there to kind of dry brush on a light coat of black. And if you get a little too much on, you can water it down and wipe it off, or you can always add a little bit more black. And in some cases, I had a little too much black on, so I did go back and put a little more of the color back on top. So I kind of just worked with it until I had the kind of coverage that I wanted. To brush on the color, I'm just using a couple of different craft paint brushes with really soft bristles. I like this smaller tipped brush for some of the smaller portions, and I also really like this larger angled brush. This is the Art Deco DuraClear Gloss Varnish, and to be honest, I don't remember exactly how much it was. It wasn't super expensive though. I'm going to guess it was about six or eight dollars for this eight fluid ounces. and. Historically, I've used a lot of Minwax Polycrylic, which is quite similar to this DuraClear Gloss Varnish. They're both kind of a milky color and they're pretty runny when you put them on. I would say that this DecoArt Varnish is a tiny bit thicker than the Minwax Polycrylic. And the Polycrylic is not uh, does not say that you should use it outdoors. I have used it outdoors and it is a good really nice clear sealer but I'm interested to compare these two because this one does indicate that you can use it outside. So how about you? Have you ever painted metal for outdoor use? If you have, what products have you used and how well did they hold up? Let me know in the comments. Also, I'd love to know your thoughts about my bench. If, I, if you think I put too much paint on it or maybe not enough, you can let me know that as well. Thanks so much for spending a little time here with me in the lab today. If you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to subscribe and check that bell icon. And I hope I'll see you back here soon in the lab.